Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. This is my uh, first show in July, but also my last show for a little while. Uh, as we gear up for our summer camps, we're going to be kicking off our summer camp next week with Animation Camp, followed by our Documentary Camp. Lastly, uh, trailing along would be our Movie Making Camp, which is a little bit more of an adjustment towards just live action movie making compared to our past, where in Animation Camp we've kind of had some live action elements in there, but this year we're going to try a little bit different not to mention our schedule is a little bit longer with a 10 to 4 p.m., 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. schedule time for a lot of those kids to come down and join and partake in our movie making camps. And then lastly, we have our final camps in August uh, during the week of the fair, and that happens from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's called Horror Camp, and it's a great opportunity for you to do that. Uh, uh, the only reason I mention this is that MCAT's schedule is going to be uh, adjusted for this, so we'll have some uh, uh, people uh, running the counter who are not usually me, myself or Neil, and so that will be going on through that. So let's jump right in. Uh, nothing for the week in terms of city council meetings, but they did have an R Missoula advisory group meeting. I took a little uh, uh, liberty of taking a look at this particular meeting. I thought this was fairly interesting to kind of see about how they're trying to work in some of the uh, gaps and some of the things when it comes to the growth policy in the city of Missoula. As Missoula is growing, they're doing some major growing pains, kicking off with David Gray, the transportation uh, planner, who is talking about zoning. The city's design standards currently have caused inequity due to building form requirements of the current zoning code. Multifamily projects have had tens of thousands of dollars of cost, construction costs added and thereby raising the rents uh, of the renters to pay for that cost. <clears throat> those higher rents are causing harm to working citizens and our fair city and exclude those that cannot afford the higher rents. Additionally, the amount of pollution and carbon footprint load added to our environment has skyrocketed due to city's form and glazing requirements. I've designed a mixed use building and the design excellence overlay, which has allowed the data to be collected to prove the negative impacts of form and design requirements of city policy. The residential units affected most by form and glazing rules have a utility cost of 190% more than the units that do not have those same zoning requirements. The base fees for the utility are the same, so the additional cost is an additional electricity created by burning coal and natural gas to meet the higher electrical demands due to the city's zoning requirements. I encourage the board to stop the city from further economic and environmental degradation through additional form and design-based regulation. Okay. And so the uh, shortening of it is that there are so many things that a lot of developers uh, hit the wall on and have to uh, readjust and uh, reobserve and kind of deal with the zoning uh, laws that are in place for the city of Missoula. So the city of Missoula has a history of poor air quality because of cars running in an area of inversion or what we call the banana belt. The other side of things relate to the cost of construction as the city has had a surplus of developers trying to keep up with demand in permitting. Uh, along with our Missoula code, there are some infill requirements that would make developers go on a little bit longer in terms of planning and uh, accelerating their plans, along with the fact that the city have to approve these permits, which also takes time, especially when there are more permits than people to keep up with the development. Growing pains sums it up nicely. So city staff uh, responds to those concerns, and this is what they had to say. Within the, the city have... Um uh, instituted and, and set up conversations to, to begin to work through, um, you know, these internal code misalignments that are being um, uh, identified through the code audit work that we've been engaged in so far. And that's to help prep for, um, for you know, when we're developing the, the code itself and being able to facilitate that and, and create efficiencies. On the growth policy update. Oh, and then one of the things I wanted to take away from this uh, particular quote that he uh, that staff was talking about is that the uh, R Missoula keyword is adjusting with the state zoning codes in reference to some of those concerns for developers that have more options as a result from the 2023 legislature, which saw reform in the rules uh, through fall and winter in the city of Missoula, updating ordinances and zoning codes to, con uh, to uh, basically uh, adjust to state law 
as and it's ongoing as we speak as well. Not to mention the fact that uh, the advisory board was saying that they're open to having more talks and stuff like that is just one of those things that a lot of things. It's when people, yeah, I always notice, that, especially in the city, is like, oh, we're opening a dialogue, and that just feels like they're kind of kicking the can down the road. But for the most part, they do stress that these plans are for what if scenarios. And so one of the things is that with everything that uh, developers have been asking for in terms of permitting, working with developers and permitting and zoning and everything like that, because you know, you want to build a building on a private piece of property, you still have to go through the city of Missoula for permitting and all that kind of stuff, depending upon where, you, where you're located. And so they're talking about some of the things they're trying to do to prevent any of these shortfalls from happening for when developers plan to develop in Missoula. Everything is iterative and it's building on what we talk about through the scenarios for growth will help us define the preferred scenario, which leads us to what code do we need to, you know, make this growth pattern happen. And so I'm really encouraging people don't wait until you're like, okay, now we're getting into the code because so many things have informed how we would write that code that maybe your voice wasn't a part of. And so yeah, I really know pushing people, you, re you really have to be engaged at all the levels of your house. Yep. And so, you know, people want things to be simple, but that's just not the case, especially when it comes to a lot of the, the zoning and codes and essentially the meeting stress, the importance of getting developers ducks in their own, so they uh, is no way of being blindsided by land use and planning codes for what they're getting approved for development. This is a policy issue according to staff and they want people to be familiar with the code before moving forward in developing these properties. The next open meeting is set for July 12th for a working group to update scenarios for code reform. Public meetings are July 17th and July 23rd at the Missoula Public Library to talk about this. And so far, as the meeting went on, they spoke about these scenarios and city staff talk uh, the reasoning behind these attempts to uh, further help developers. We want the, to use the scenarios to engage the community um, in understanding and weighing of, of trade-offs. Um, essentially, how do different growth patterns impact how current and future you know, Missoulians live, work, and play? Um, and the feedback from the community um, on these we'll use to design a preferred um, approach um, to these key policy issues. The preferred approach will attempt to balance multiple perspectives and concerns while making real progress on a more equitable, affordable, and sustainable future. Yeah, and every 10 years or so, the city goes into a major growth policy update. City planning about how many things, you know, the city spent uh, uh, th uh, thousands and thousands of dollars to come up with a plan for our Missoula growth policy, and they advocated through different outside departments, people, public meetings, 3,500 people in the city of Missoula gave input on this growth policy, a uh, higher percentage than most other cities would get in terms of public uh, engagement on this. But this was back in 2018. We have to deal with the major growing pains that happened from the pandemic, which saw more than 4,000 people move into the city of Missoula in a post-2020 world, which also they talked a little bit more about population uh, uh, and how it changes. And as we d dive deeper into these scenarios, which saw population increase as a result of COVID uh, in bigger cities, uh, the spike in folks moving in, but city staff have been looking at those numbers and current increase projections moving forward. And this is what they're saying in terms of our population. Um, our population projection estimates that we'll see almost 130,000 people living within the growth policy boundary area by 2045. Our housing needs assessment um, has identified that in order to meet that new population, we would need to produce a certain number of housing units somewhere in the you know low 20,000 um, units range. Um, but we are also operating um, and have been for some time at a very low uh, meet, which means unhealthy vacancy rate. So when we factor um, in for not only keeping pace with population growth, but also pulling our way back into a healthy vacancy rate, um, the housing need grows um, to the, you know, and probably more, more towards the upper 20,000 units range. So the scenarios will use that upper range of needed housing. All right, and as you can kind of see here, like the current population, I, I would probably say it's closer to like 86, 87,000 from what I've noticed, but they did, did the current estimated population, but 2045 is a lot closer than the 1980s if you <laughs> look at the numbers, but it's kind of crazy, but we're gonna get, we are definitely expected to get more than 100 and 
nearly 130,000 people. And then under production in terms of housing, we're short about uh, 3,500 units, depending upon. And then the needs for more people as we go f uh, forward in this as well. And then the amount of people in the workforce and everything like that. And so, yeah, the, you know, it's, it, Missoula's always kind of been a hard place to uh, live in terms of people who want to get a job here in Missoula, but in terms of people who want to move here to retire, Missoula's always kind of been the place to be. But as far as I'm concerned, it's from, from what I'm seeing, and you know, I've lived here for 35 plus years, is that if you are trying to latch onto a job of some kind in the city of Missoula, don't expect to get paid as much compared to other cities that have more bustling um, uh, diversity when it comes to a lot of those kinds of jobs. But then again, um, you know, if the city grows, you know, you get a glimpse of the numbers on the screen, you know, 35,000 more people in the next 20 years, even looking around town, there are a lot more vacancy signs in both rentals and homes for sale. However, the pricing seems to be scaring some people away since cost of living has outweighed wages in Missoula as trends continue to grow upwards. Bozeman just had an assessment recently that basically said that the average median house in Bozeman is a million dollars or $975,000, which is actually $52,000 more than uh, places in Seattle, Washington. So, so as of now, the city wants to create a registry that folks uh, that follows land use and planning on certain parcels of land. This is kind of like saying this land you can use to develop, but here are some of the limitations on the land beyond residential, commercial, and industrial. Of course, the last one is rarely used in the context, even though the city is looking to redevelop some industrial land to let's curve it back down to more of a uh, commercial slash uh, residential property, kind of like they did with a majority of the properties on the north side, Scott Street neighborhood. So let's talk, talk about the method to their madness in terms of what they're going to do. The development prototypes are a model of a typical development that would be possible and likely under a given set of land use and market assumptions. So prototypes were developed generally for each zone district um, and in some, with some prototypes applying multiple districts um, with the standards were you know, similar enough. And finally, the prototypes are synced with financial pro forma model to estimate the financial returns that could be expected if that prototype were developed. Are prototypes like buildings, like drawings of possible? They're 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 like the um, uh, factors for a build for a, a building, like the the fight the okay. specs, I guess you, you could say. That makes sense. Like parking standards, open space. Yeah, to some to some degree. So they're, they're a set of assumptions for what the building, uh, what that project, that specific. It's a specific development project that's pegged to these different zoning districts. And the attempt was to find the high end, like the most intense development. All right. And so, yeah, there's definitely a lot going on for sure. And this last uh, clip that I got for you guys is that uh, some developments are very cookie cutter, while others require very little, little to more planning. And these scenarios are meant to look out for developers to keep up with demand and any pitfalls they may face based on zoning standards for the city of Missoula. Time is, fi uh, financial, time is the financial enemy of developers and the city wants to have a malleable cookie, cook, cookie cutter. And the board also dis discusses the difference between urban, suburban, and uh, kind of shows you just kind of like how the grids work and everything with the uh, city of Missoula. And you know how urban, suburban planning ebbs and flows kind of goes back and forth you know suburbia is mostly for the outskirts of town so people can come into town urban areas are a little bit more gridlocked so people can get access to every parts of the city by uh, utilizing neighborhoods so here's a little uh, taste of what you guys can see in terms of the difference between more urban sprawl and suburban uh, li living you know this residential medium includes both this um, more urban neighborhood uh, uh, kind of place and as well as uh, other more suburban uh, neighborhoods. And um, so this is showing, you know, the distinction, say, between the university district and the part of these Patty Canyon neighborhoods. Um, so this is an example of where the preferred use is similar, but the form and context is, is totally different. So, and, and this can be challenging in implementation, uh, like for example, in rezonings, uh, because the community and, and staff can have different um, interpretations of what the intent is. Um, so to sum up, um, 
this is a representation of the application of a land use designation as it's used today. Um, so in our current growth policy. Yeah, so if you actually take a, a deeper look at some of these these slides right here, you know, grid, suburban areas, you have curved, you know, possible dead ends to some of these areas. And, you know, suburbans can actually exist in more of the urban infrastructure just because they're able to, like, have areas in which, like, oh, this is as far as it goes. We're getting close to the mountain. There's no through the mountain. So people have to kind of know that when they turn into this area that there's definitely, uh, they have to, uh, turn around and go out this same way they came in as opposed to urban areas which is basically works intangible within the city's uh, traffic and wayfinding type areas and wayfinding is just a fancy word of saying go that way to go through essentially so um, yeah I mean there, there's a little bit of the uh, uh, R Missoula advisory board they meet ever so often and I just wanted to kind of uh, highlight them as a little bit just because I usually don't get to uh, talk about other, some of these more committee and advisory board meetings. Planning board is another big one because they do talk about uh, a lot of issues that are impacting Missoula which includes uh, uh, procuring more of the agricultural land to uh, preserve for future use for farming anything like that and to kind of uh, build as a kind of a quasi uh, they even spoke about this in this particular meeting was the rural uh, urban uh, or ur rural suburban which is a little bit more mixed of like uh, larger plots of land with potential for uh, egg development as well and the takeaway from this meeting is the fact that some areas can be developed in certain ways to support commercial businesses to move into urban residential neighborhoods which for more suburban areas tend to have lower traffic and no sidewalks in the area with wider streets unlike areas which are looked looking to include lower density urban areas. And I found myself noticing many differences in developments, especially our Missoula growth policy that reflects the needs, but some of the limitations of developing sites near amenities versus amenities needed in areas being developed. Hence, urban mixed use versus normal single home in the area meant for neighborhood living uh, uh, where is where there is access to transportation. The city has issues with bus stops in some of these areas uh, urban areas that are off the beaten path compared to more frequent use from Reserve Street as you get closer to more urban residential to Franklin to the Fort neighborhoods that are on a grid but on the other side of Reserve which we have more rural suburban areas which have some farm like in the corner farm uh, the city purchased to preserve egg land um, and I hope this helps your ability to understand some of the changes and potential pitfalls of development based on zoning that reflects mixed commercial residential to move traditional standards that are not grid-based development. So up next we have some videos for you guys that are featured MCAT's uh, programming and more. <laughs> I'll tell you about my journey, and maybe it will help your journey too um, in looking at what your, your family is all about and what your heritage is. And um, so I started with uh, my, my father, this cutie right here, who looks just like my sister Adrian at the same time and still today. And so this is my dad. He was the baby of six, of eight kids, five, um, sons and three daughters and so this is my 
father, uh, grandfather Joseph Dusso and mon, mon, uh, my grandmère um, Marie Dusso. Uh, actually, she was primo. And one of the nice things about studying French um, genealogy is that the female always kept their maiden name as a point of reference or for all practical purposes. I don't know. I sometimes cheat on my vibrators. <laughs> no. Somehow that was not up there. Uh, their height. Oh. Cheat on their height. It's, it's cheat on, not lie about. But I think that was three. Oh. <laughs> sports. Ooh, cheat on sports. No, you guys get the points. I, I love the experience the audience gets of watching them play. I get it too. Oh. Cheat on the diet. Oh, no. and that was it. All right. I, I feel like it's being like not very dramatic. Maybe it's like, all right, and then just move on. But I don't know what else to do. Like, Hey guys, we are back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. It is uh, 4th of July weekend, so some of these movies already came out, but these are some of the movies that you guys can enjoy this weekend, or not enjoy because it's time for Pre-Critic, where I judge this movie based on absolutely nothing but my predisposition towards movies. And just, I love movies. I just watch a lot of movies, and so plots are pretty basic at this point. And we're back again for yet another heartless cash grab in the form of Minions and, you know, the other characters in this movie takes uh, their heavy hitters and continues the beat this, uh, to beat this franchise further and further. Watch as Gru and family, go, uh, Gru is the main character in the uh, Despicable Me movies, not the Minions, just so you guys know, and his family go into hiding because they're saving time travel for their last venture into creativity. When you have a sci-fi element and don't do time travel, that's a win in most storytelling, but when you bring a family, uh, which the creator said would not age up, the characters like The Simpsons, adds a baby, because you always got to add a kid, so they pulled a Brady Bunch, uh, where they add a kid, when a story becomes a little stale, uh, Full House gets a little bit fuller, and we frankly should have pulled a mega mind and totally ruined the franchise by and originality by making a TV show by throwing in a plucky new kid. Anyways, this movie's coming out this weekend, and it's essentially uh, the family goes into protective services because there's a villain that's after them and all that kind of stuff. And I guess the minions get superpowers, and so they make uh, fun of uh, Avengers, Justice League type movies and stuff like that. So there's there's some of the elements that you kind of expect from this. Then we got Sound of Hope. You like the old Sound of Freedom, but this one is a little bit more uh, heavy hitting when it comes to more like social services, foster children. Um, uh, so as The Sound of Freedom made you hate traveling, this one will hit home as children become punching bags for terrible parents and this movie follows the weird justice system when it comes to taking children and putting them in homes in a gritty movie that ain't Little Orphan Annie. Watch as Texans can only do it bigger than anyone else. They adopt out 77 kids from a broken and often abusive foster, foster system where the government pays people to watch children. Finally, we have video game, because there's actually not much coming out this weekend, which is kind of weird because, you know, 4th of July is such a big weekend for movies. Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, uh, just so you know, this game came out many, many years ago, but Nintendo has been doing this thing called uh, uh, throwing a HD coat of paint on things and just upselling them for $60. We have yet another remake in the works, but Nintendo wanted to upscale one of their D DS, that's dual screen, uh, type games for the console. But they don't really have consoles anymore since the fully embraced and nearly monopolized handheld gaming. In this game, you will play as Mario's brother. The main reason the game is called M Mario Brothers. Anyways, watch as the plumber fights ghosts from a bygone franchise that has gadgets for a minute, but only took o continued with Luigi while Mario got a magical hat for his last game. Uh, fight ghosts, go to multiple mansions rather than just one stop shop in the other games. Uh, but a hotel and the third one seemed to make sense. So those are the uh, things that are coming out this week and more. Up next, we have a new uh, dub and stuff for you guys from the movie The Big Bluff. 
I've never heard of the concept of double fisting, but here we go. Uh, maybe you should slow down. Well, that's your opinion. And besides, I could use the calories. I like the ones that taste like salad. Right, and if you eat the salary, you get the calorie. Uh, but you guys are eating 120 proof vodka. I think they use the same kind of brand of alcohol to strip the asphalt from the street. And those are for brunch. Well, I don't need anyone to drink explain me anything on how I want to drink. Okay, my... okay, I get it. Well, then we can move past it. Oh, and besides, the calories don't count if they don't touch your teeth. Oh, so what kind of drink are you going to drink anyways tonight, Mr. Fancy Pants? I've decided to get rummy bears. It's where they put vodka over regular gummy bears and you shove them up your nose. I don't recommend it. Hello, everyone. Sorry I'm late. The cab driver, uh, shot. Oh, never mind. It's really boring. It's not that entertaining after all. Oh, thank goodness. Say no more. Do you think I can sit here with y'all? Well, yeah, you're the fourth... You know, you're not supposed to lie to the hostess on exactly how many people are going to show up to this. My friend Nancy miscounted, and her husband became president. Well, I hate to bail on y'all, but me and my guy have to... Sex. I wish we could have hung out longer, but this is more important. Oh, so uh, what do you think they're actually going to be doing? I don't know. Probably something illegal or whatever. Let's talk about us. We're not getting a chinchilla. Oh, I get it. You don't love me, do you? Maybe my mother was right. Well, your mother can see the future, after all. Perhaps she can see where this is going. She says if I put up with you long enough, you'll die and leave me all your money. Oh, uh, that was in the prenuptial agreement. Ah, uh, hey, you. Stop watching people eat again. I told you this many times before. Ugh, so annoying. Hmm. Hmm. Are you sure we should have left them early? Yeah, we had some important business. To... I mean, I told the host to uh, keep an eye on them. Yeah, your excuse was kind of uh, lazy, kind of uh, pedantic. Are you sure we should be doing this? This? All right, pretend to laugh. Uh, okay. <laughs> that was so fun. <laughs> uh, did you guys have a marvelous time? Oh, yes, we talked about Brussels sprouts. Oh, yes, we uh, did the uh, sex That's thing. That's a little bit too much information. I think she speaks for everyone. What did you guys get up to? Oh, nothing suspicious. You heard the lady? You know, suspicious rams was delicious. How about some snacks? Honey, I don't think they have snacks. We shouldn't be uh, pressuring people into providing them. Let me just shake the hand of the man I believe in. Everyone believes in you, honey. Oh, hold on. I forgot something. Um, how much longer are you guys going to be? Because I'm getting really tired, and I need to get some sleep, if you know what I mean. Oh, yes, I'm one to put a potato sack over my head, too. Come on, let's do it together. Huh, you and your beauty regimens, honey. You and your beauty regimens. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Let's jump right into your First Friday. It is First Friday of July. Next time you'll probably see me is when I talk about First Friday for August. Uh, as I jump right in, we're going to talk about the first one that's kicking off at the Gallery 709 inside the Art uh, Montana Art and Framing, which is off Ronan Street. So you have to go quite off the beaten path uh, next to the Milwaukee Trail. And here is the, uh, it's called uh, Salt Mine Summer Eve, showing showcasing bl uh, Bev uh, Gukert, uh, me Media Prints, Steve Gukert's Drawing Machines, uh, Catherine Maloney Sculptures, Karen Rice, uh, Photo Graveur, uh, Edgar Smith Paintings, Catherine Hailey Paoli Paintings, and guest artist Ellen or Ornitz uh, talking, doing some ceramics. This uh, summer evening party is a, a first Friday. It goes from 5 to uh, 9 p.m. at Ronan Street. You can go on to gallery709.com for more information on this and more. Uh, then we got a pop-up gallery at Ronan Law and Tour Dance Company. This month they're featuring an artist, Ronan Law, who is a queer and trans artist in Anac from Anaconda, Montana, found, in, found art as an outlet for self-expression despite a restrictive upbringing. Diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder in 2021, Ronan gained better self-understanding and has since participated in local markets, selling handmade dog collars, stickers and jewelry. The first Friday run on to display a punch needle series featuring Montana's native butterflies. Um, following uh, by uh, Kate Thompson's own tour dance company, TDC brings the love of dance to Missoula. Katie trained in Maine, Seattle, New York, and LA honors hip hop jazz legacies while exploring her artistic vision. And so you guys can expect that happening at the Wren Hotel. Then we have another one that's happening at the artist shop. 
This is uh, Pantina, Pantima, Pantina, sorry, May, Meg Hansen, a series of acry uh, acrylic paintings on rusted steel exploring life around every day and while traveling the world creating art helps us reflect on our place in the natural world, exploring how we as humans uh, place ourselves within a greater world facilitates conversation about conversation and uh, uh, consciousness on how humanity impacts the natural world. Okay, just bear with me. Okay, moving on. Uh, we also have uh, Bethany Joyce, uh, Explore Art at the Missoula Art Museum. Celebrate contemporary art in the heart of Missoula, ma'am, during the first Friday. Uh, it's a no-host bar. Uh, Zero Missoula's first authentic Pakistani food truck will park in front of the ma'am. Uh, explore immersive installation arts and extravaganza of color play, empowering social commentary and community-centered, uh, politically active uh, contemporary art by 18 world-class artists. Plus, the downstairs education gallery will find murals created by Fraser School students from Fort Peck Indian Reservation honoring and raising awareness for missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. We also have Runt at the Clay Studio of Missoula. This is an opening exhibit by Grace Orwell's exhibit celebrates the uh, completion of her time at the Clay Studio of Missoula. Resident artist from 2022 to 2024, Grace creates objects as vassals for reflecting on her upbringing in rural Nebraska and the enduring impact of those experiences in her adult life. The object, the ceramic vessel, is a dynamic space to explore her learned ideas of class, engage with work immersively to understand the world as she sees it whilst being able to build her, their own narratives in pursuit of personal progression. Grace documents her thoughts as dimensional snapshots in time through the enduring medium of clay. This ex exhibition runt Grace embases their inner work as an intimate scale, utilizing landscape imagery portra portraitures, a myriad of ceramic techniques. She assembles a mosaic of objects that attempts to unravel the complexities of shared cultural values, differences, and struggles. So you can uh, join this and check it all out. It's at the Clay Studio of Missoula. And then lastly, we have uh, J.W. Krantz, is a classic acrylic artist focusing on Montana natural and Native American heritage. And this will be featured at the AC Hotel. It's that new building that popped up where the old Firestone building used to be. It's by the, the old Merck uh, in that little city block and it directly across from the Wren Hotel. So there's a lot of uh, central location. Then uh, Radius Gallery is also has some art that's happening there. They're not featuring a specific artist, but there is a great uh, art there that you guys can check out as well that is ongoing. So those are some of your art guides for the weekend as I transition into more of your other events. So for those of you who don't want to go out and see some of the art, these are the, some things that you guys can see that are adjacent to the art, which also I need to give a shout out to Josh Farmer, who is doing an outside patio show starting at 7 p.m. outside the Old Post. And he'll also be doing a double header tonight as well. So. We're going to kick things off with a summer learning program. This is an ongoing thing here at the Missoula Public Library and all summer long. They're doing a library adventures scavenger hunt. So if you want to get involved with that, talk to your library librarian um, here at the Missoula Public Library. All summer long, the, uh, the library must be explored. Pick up a library scan scavenger hunt sheet on the second floor and start your quest. Follow the clues to find letters hidden throughout the library. Once you find all the letters, solve the puzzle and receive a prize. Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarian Open House opens at 10 a.m. and Power Place uh, play hours at the uh, Missoula Food Bank at 10 a.m. Uh, this is a great way for kids to learn while you go out and shop through nutritious food provided by the Missoula Food Bank. Museum open hours. Uh, the Spectrum is going to be doing some uh, forensics starting at 2 p.m. this afternoon. Spectrum Discovery Center is a great way for kids to get engaged with learning through science and engaging exhibits. Tiny Tales is also happening today at 10.30 a.m. at the inside the uh, second floor. So there's a lot of things happening at the second floor of the Missoula Public Library. But if you want to take a detour, you can go to the Missoula Senior Center. If you're 55 and older, you only get to pay $8 for a nice lunch at the Missoula Senior Center. Pavarello Center provides free lunch for citizens. They also have a breakfast, lunch, and dinner times uh, daily. Missoula Senior Center just has lunches every uh, day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. And back at the Missoula Public Library, they have yarns for people who like to stitch and crochet at the Missoula Public Library on the fourth floor every Friday at noon. All Abilities Art Club, they're doing this at base starting at 1 p.m. Young Adult Writers Group at the Missoula Public Library at 3.30 p.m. Aladdin at MCT, so this is a uh, uh, abridged version of the Aladdin story uh, featured by the writing of Missoula Children's Theater and they're doing a show at 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. different groups of kids for different times. Uh, summertime Lego Club 
uh, Missoula Public Library once again at 4 p.m. Kids are going to play with Legos. They usually do it in the afternoons, but during the summer, they're doing it Fridays at 4 p.m. Stars and Stripes Planetarium Show. So 4 p.m., 5 p.m., Stars and Stripes version. It's at the UM Payne Center where they do at their planetarium. So join them and say hi to Ailey for me if she is working that night. So John Wick Pinball Launch Party. Uh, Odd Pitch Brewing Company does a John Wick Pinball theme. Um, starting at 6 p.m., there will be prizes for the top five players. Kettle House Amphitheater is doing uh, blues music, so Slash is going to be at Kettle House Amphitheater starting at 6 p.m. Dungeons and Dragons Guild for Adults, virtual programming at Missoula Public Library Online starting at 6 p.m. Missoula Mini Golf Summer 2024, the green space next to the Warehouse Mall. Great opportunity for people who like mini golf to uh, do mini golf at 6 p.m. Three Dog Mike and One Dog Holly at Imagination Brewing Company at 6 p.m. Uh, Naomi Moon Siegel and the Owens Live at Ten Spoon is going to be at 6 p.m. at Ten Spoon Winery. Josh Farmer, like I said, he's going to be doing Old Post Parking Lot Party at 7 p.m. Uh, followed by a uh, Union Club gig at 9 p.m. We'll have Paranormal Circus, Cirque Soleil, so it's kind of like human-animal kind of uh, acts. It's kind of like an equal parts burlesque horror show at the Southgate Mall. There's going to be a big tent there. It's going to be happening all weekend long. They already did their show last night from when I, re I don't know if they did it last night. I'm not entirely sure, but they usually do have fireworks at the Southgate Mall uh, Thursday night, which it is uh, 4th of July. And today is the 5th of July, the day after. If you guys are up this morning watching me, what are you doing with your life? Anyway, <laughs> Night Blooming Jasmine is going to be playing some blues and swing music at Cranky Sam uh, Public House, wrapping up your Saturday, uh, Friday as we jump into Saturday. As always, Saturday markets and such are happening all uh Summer long, when it ends the uh, end of October, this happens from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. downtown Missoula area. Uh, Buckskin Hide Tanning Workshop, Montana Folk School. Uh, join the Folk School and Joshua Lisbon to turn deer skin into buckskin. Learn to the entire process of traditional brain tanning in this multi-day course. Students will be take a deer hide from being skin straight off the animal to beautiful buckskin. Make your space walk-in hours at Missoula Public Library at 10 a.m. This is a great way for people to 3D print, scan, and more. Uh, Missoula, uh, then they have the Missoula Public Library story time as they do it every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. Moon Round of Homestead open hours at 11 a.m. This is a kind of like an open museum of homestead living back in this day of Missoula run by the city of Missoula. This is a great opportunity for people to kind of see what homesteading was all about. Uh, museum tour at the Missoula Art Museum. So if you missed their first Friday, every Saturday, the Missoula Art Museum does special museum tours starting at 11 a.m. every Saturday. And then we got Paint Your Own Bath Bombs. Golden Leaf Studios in the Southgate Mall does their summer 2024 Paint Your Own Bath Bombs starting at noon on Saturday. Electronics uh, for beginners. Missoula Public Library is combining coding to, with hardware to, to do wide variety of things. Uh, it's a great way for, to learn the basics of circuitry, coding, and more. This is at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Bingo night at Odd Pitch at 6 p.m. Jake Swank is going to be playing some folk music at Imagination Brewing Covenant at 6 p.m. Tain Spoon Winery playing some bluegrass with the Wolf and the Moons. Russ Nassad and the Revelators at 7 p.m. at Jack Saloon playing some country music. Solid State Karaoke at West Side Lane, some fun Saturday at 9 p.m. Sam Nelson Band is going to be playing some music at Union Club on Saturday night. Chris Moon is going to be wrapping up your day, uh, uh, your Saturday at 10 p.m. at the Badlander. Sam Nelson and the Lost Cause Trio at the Jack Saloon, 4 p.m. Sunday afternoon. Pinball Tournament, Odd Pitch, 4 p.m. Sunday. Missoula Funk F Festival at Silver Park, starting at 4 p.m. on Sunday. Lucinda Williams at the Wilma playing some country music, 7 p.m. on Sunday. Very funny comedy open mic at the VFW every Sunday at 8 p.m. Rocking Karaoke at 30 p.m. at Sunrise Saloon. And then wrapping up your uh, weekend is the Paranormal Circus Soleil kind of thing happening at the uh, Southgate Mall all weekend long. So you guys can check those out by going on to MissoulaEvents.net. Want to know what's, like, what's happening in the city of Missoula? You can go to MissoulaEvents.net. It is a great and wonderful resource for people wanting to know exactly what's going on in the city of Missoula with highlighted events up on top. I also have to mention that uh, every Wednesday is the um, Out to Lunch, which features a band and uh, lunch, lunch and a bunch of food trucks happening at Karis Park every single Wednesday. From, 10, uh, from 11 a.m. to um, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Also, uh, they have a dinner in the park or downtown tonight every Thursday from about 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Great way to get some food and beer for your Thursday night. So that's pretty much it for your events. 
I have some news items that I also want to talk about as well. And starting at the end of July, or uh, the Missoula ordinance to basically ban uh, overnight uh, long-term camping in the city of Missoula uh, went, goes into effect. The resolution passed earlier last month with buffer zones in areas near rivers, businesses, and schools, to name a few, with concessions to let folks camp inside public parks in designated zones that are near amenities like trash bins and bathrooms. As of June 28th, the Supreme Court also overturned the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal ruling on Johnson versus Grants Pass. Per this ruling, municipalities are again able to enforce camping bans regardless of shelter bed availability and impose criminal penalties for infractions. And in many ways, the city has uh, liberties to go further than what we've done already. So currently, the ordinance would g give teeth to enforcement to charge individuals who violate this resolution, which passed a 10 to 2 in City Council on June 24th. Now, without a fight, each meeting brought in many concerned citizens voiced in opposition to nearly 10 hours of meeting, 10 hour meeting for the last two Monday City Council meetings. Supporter says that the restrictions are needed to mitigate the negative health, safety, and environmental impacts on unsheltered people camping through public property. Uh, Dana Carlino, City Council member, stressed the need for a long term campsite for services to go f to folks who cannot get it or will not access the shelters in towns. However, many of the city's response is that the costly services will not be able to achieve success and open the, the door to liability in hosting homeless. Uh, this is also harkens back to the church system being able to provide shelter, but it still has to deal with the health department's code to pr uh, provide amenities and clean places to stay long term. However, many churches in Missoula are being courted to use their parking lots as sanctuary for vehicles who would just as well have been towed. Colorado is also worried for those living in their cars, which has become the new way of living homeless. Uh, if they're towed, uh, they violate the ordinance, and those living in tents would, will be moved too much for the POBS hot teams, the, uh, the uh, homeless outreach teams, to get to. Mayor Andrea Davis calls the new rule a phase one, and the city would evaluate and change as needed. And so overall, the overnight camping will have to vacate 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day starting July 25th with those lucky enough to live in their cars to have a 30, 30 days through a permitting process. The city plans to uh, keep this fine free with alternative with community service requirements as an alternative to paying a fee. So uh, before this goes into effect, the city parks and rec uh, director Donna Gockler will map out buffer areas for people to go to. They have a couple examples here and there. It's pretty weird since before 2018, the city government were not as hands on to help homeless people with uh, partnerships, private, public and service providers stepping up. So the Ar Salvation Army stepped up in the 2008 winter and the citizens flood the city council to provide a winter shelter which the city took more responsibility during the pandemic with more money coming into our communities to help these folks but services were created they could not sustain and the city opted to move out of the service providers at the scale as the money became more and more scarce there is a lot of money out there in for missoula but homelessness is not one of those uh things that they can fund montana free press spoke about statistics and then on a single day april in April, 622 uh, households were experienced in homelessness in the city of Missoula, according to the statewide database used by the city. Roughly 30 to 40 percent of Missoula's homeless population is on shelters, which is kind of funny since our home prices went up by 30 to 40 percent, depending upon where you look. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you reduce the price of uh, cost of living by three to four hundred dollars less, you wouldn't have a lot of these problems and potentially cut homelessness in half. And going back into ca cost of housing, uh, I spoke about this earlier in the show. Bozeman alone reached a $1 million home status as, the, uh, as their medium home price of $979,000. And like I said before, it's $52,000 more than living, buying a house in the city of Seattle. Missoula is uh, at $645,000 currently, which is just another major jump from last year, which saw a $525,000 medium housing price. Of course, these higher prices are nice if you want to sell, but those who are on a fixed income, that tax assessment last year saw major increases in our taxes in Montana as a result. And as we talk about money, the Sheriff Department got $2 million to move into their new home closer to the county jail, right across the street, originally located in the county courthouse. Many of these changes uh, occur with transferring of government to the John Engen Government Center. And on top of that, this would also create opening space and for court proceedings to have more space to do that. Commissioners on Tuesday approved the $2 million purchase of the property located at 2415 Mullen Road. The property, which is uh, directly across and used to house uh, Walla Walla University and sits across the street from the county jail in the U.S. Supreme 
Uh, and so that's what's going to be happening moving forward as I transition to my next story. As the U.S. Supreme Court ruled out the president has broad immunity when it comes to decisions while made in power, but rules out immunity for personal cases outside the system, which is kind of unclear. Essentially, the felony slash conviction of that recently took place in New York sees Trump sentencing before the election. Essentially, he could pardon himself if he were to retake the office. However, much of these looking to pin the January 6th on him and voting fraud, those prospects have, muff, have been muffled at best. Chief uh, John Roberts wrote for the court, quote, under the Constitution structure of separated powers, the nature of presidential powers entitles a former president to absolute immunity for criminal prosecution for actions within conclusive and preclusive constitutional authority and he is entitled to at least presumptive immunity from prosecution for all his official acts. There's no immunity for official acts, end quote. For instance, Trump's pressuring uh, former VP Mike Pence to overturn could be used as a uh, prosecution for obstruction of official proceedings, but at the same time, he was in office, so that would essentially may make it uh, impossible for, it, for him to receive any kind of prosecutions. However, the overall takeaway from SCOTUS is the fact that presidential powers are easier to bend within the Department of Justice holding up the president with it, without the Department of Justice holding up a president with investigation into their actions as official acts versus the non-official acts as the media and the Democratic parties have hyped up January 6th and the impeachment trial, which are Trump being acquitted by the Senate. The law also never clarified what is an official act or unofficial act as president, so it's very reminiscent of President Nixon who famously said, quote, well, when the president does it, that means that it is not illegal, end quote. He was not the last president to get closest to criminal prosecution, but Gerald, Gerald Ford pardoned him when he took office in his state. Um, this is also opens the door for Biden to enact powers that essentially is the ability to fire a gun however they want with no criminal consequences, thus emboldening the office of the presidency. And of course, as we talk about politics and stuff like that a little bit more, much to my displeasure, as Europe also sees major shifts in their politics, nearly aiming for right-wing conservative views connecting with voters, UK has seen a shift in their right-wing authority go back to labor routes, more uh, liberal, and for the last 14 years, the Tories, as they're called, uh, were part of the many uh, changes in the UK, with Brexit being one of their biggest things that the country did to get out of the European Union. And with the Prime Minister resigning this morning, the Labour Party plans to vote in Keir Starmer. Starmer has led the uh, Labour Party in a landslide election victory and becomes the first leader from the centre-left party to win the UK national election since Tony Blair, who won three in a row starting in 1997. Tony Blair, not without his scrutiny, was also part of leadership that led the UK into the war in Iraq, which put a sour taste in many folks' mouths, among other things. They also have to understand that the Thatcher left quite a reputation to the conservative branch, as well as it seems the leadership has had longer stretches with one party over the other for some time. It's kind of funny how uh, changes have impacted many countries in Europe over the last uh, election. Cycles include France, which has come, came out of a surprise not only to the voters, but actually the leadership behind President Emmanuel Macron, who called for snap elections, which he didn't actually need to, but most of his motivation came to the fact that he, he believed that there was an emboldened uh, left-wing party that was uh, going to have, but as it resulted, more right-wing and independent voices took up a lot of those seats, which saw him uh, basically just kind of get shoot himself in the foot. So the last couple of months of dissatisfaction with his leadership from farmers, protesters, and more right-wing groups capitalizing on the waning popularity, not to mention strikes when the iron is hot, even though Macron signed, sealed, and delivered his fate. The party led uh, Marine Le Pen, which was founded by her father in 1972, Jean-Marie Le Pen. The senior Le Pen was known for his anti-Semitic slurs and racist platform. He suggested the Nazis may not have used gas chambers and made common cause with former Waffer, Waffen SS officers and extreme right-wing groups. But since uh, taking charge in 2011, the younger Le Pen has steadily worked on making the mar party more palatable for the folks as well. But their reputation is still strong, hence why most of the media outlets have basically painted them as extreme right-wing. Right There's a lot of right-wing uh, things happening in and around, which kind of shows if this trend means anything in the world of politics, Biden's not so strong debate last week as well. Uh, it's clear that changes in the air and major decisions have been made to save the status quo in many countries dealing with this dissatisfaction with their leaders. Of course, con um, 
there's, you know, this is all speculation at this point because with every leadership and everything that you think is going wrong, everyone always, it, it, it pendulum swings back and forth all the time and it's always kind of been that way. And, you know, it, I'm never one to, uh, you know, be afraid of one side over the other for one reason or another. But, you know, that's the nice thing about U.S. government is that it's always kind of went back and forth, even though to me a lot of times both parties seem like they're just the same people. Anyways, moving on, um, I also wanted to leave on a high note this morning as well as I wanted to congratulate the Missoula Strike soccer team making it to nationals. Woo! The team has won Montana State Championship five times in a row and has attended the regional tournament each year. While they have seen increasing success regionally, they have never made it to the nationals based on how much they had to raise money for. And the deadline was July 3rd, which they saw some people pouring out to give some support for them to do their national tournament, which I believe is happening in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. So that does it for me. I hope you guys have a wonderful month. You won't be seeing me for quite some time. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend.